If you think your images are boring, you might not be a bad photographer, just not a good editor. When I started doing photo editing, I would have to take hours and individually cut out each aspect of the photo that I wanted to edit because I wanted to edit everything individually. Since then, AI has made that way easier and using it to your advantage is a must. The key to having a good photo is to have some type of variation between your subject and the background, whether that's color temperature, brightness, contrast, whatever it is, there should be something subtly different about the background and the subject to separate them. And you can do that in camera with, with flashes, with the sun, with whatever, and then we're gonna accentuate it in post. Once you have a base good image, I usually take it into Lightroom, this is a photo I took in the fall. So I always start with making sure my cropping is good. Gonna auto straighten it, it's usually pretty good. We're gonna center them up a little and put the horizon line on the bottom third. Try to get as close to that as possible in camera, but obviously perfect it in post. And then we're gonna go over to the layers. And most of my editing is done in the layers panel because we wanna edit the background and the subject separately. We're gonna create our base mask. So we're gonna select the subject and it's pretty good. Like you can see it's cut out pretty good. Like it's good enough. And then we're gonna create one for the background and we're gonna start with that. So I'm gonna take my subject and really to separate the subject from the background, you can do it in a few different ways. You can make the subject brighter than the background, make the color temperature of the subject different than the background. So in this one, we're gonna do a little bit of both. It's kind of a fine tuning thing. It's kind of a tweaking as you go to make to get your image where you want it to be. So we're gonna start with the subject. We're gonna boost their exposure just a little bit, up the contrast, drop the highlights, up the shadows, boost the whites and drop the blacks. The blacks is your black point and the whites is your white point and we're taking those and we're pulling them apart. And the highlights and the shadows are the areas between the middle and the bottom and the top. So we're gonna drop the highlights down towards the middle, but pull the white point up. We're gonna pull the shadows up a little away from the bottom, but pull the black point down. That way we have a bigger depth of highlights and shadows. And we're gonna boost their temperature just a hair. We're gonna throw a little dehaze in there. Then we're gonna go to our background. In our background, we shot this in the fall. The leaves weren't totally turned yet, but we're gonna kind of cheat that. Um, so we're gonna drop the highlights because we lose a little detail on the highlights in the background. So we're gonna drop those down. We're gonna up the shadows a little bit. Same thing, boost the whites, drop the blacks. And that kind of gives the background more depth. Up the contrast. Again, dehaze just a little, but here's where we're gonna separate it. We're gonna boost the color temperature here to make it feel much warmer. Now we have an image with a lot more depth and it's starting to come together a little bit. I'd like to let the light source inspire where this next mask will go. So if the sun was off to the left, we put this off to the left. If the sun was off to the right, we put it off to the right. But for this, it's directly behind them. So we're gonna take this radial gradient. Did my mouse just fucking die. All right, so we're gonna create a radial gradient mask. We're gonna put it right in the middle. And then we're gonna go in into this mask and we're gonna edit this mask. We're gonna subtract our subject. So now, we're editing this area minus our subject. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna boost it because that's where our light source is and we're gonna kind of fake it. And we're gonna make it a, even warmer. So now you can see we have this highlight behind our subject and it's pulling them out of the background. And from there, we're gonna create a second radial gradient and we're gonna do, we're gonna highlight our subject again, but this time we're gonna invert it and we're gonna drop the exposure around it to create kind of a more precise vignette. And with that, that pulls your eye towards the middle because the subject is now highlighted, not only by the highlight behind it, but because they are the bright point in the image. Another thing I like to do is take a linear gradient from the bottom, pull it up. So we're editing the ground and we're gonna subtract the subject again because we don't want that. And we're gonna drop this exposure just a hair increase the clarity to kind of give it some more texture. 
And that's a pretty good point to be at. So now you've taken this pretty colorless raw image and you've brought it to life. And it's kind of a balancing act. You go back, fine tune just a little bit. We're gonna bring them up a little bit, warm them up a little bit. And you're just gonna go back and forth between your layers and make sure it looks good. Finally, we're gonna go over to the color panel or the color mixer and we're gonna make it more fall because we want the fall look, but it wasn't quite there yet. We're gonna shift the hue of the oranges a little bit. We're gonna take the yellows and we're gonna make them a little more orange. And this is kind of just like playing with it and seeing what it does and getting the color that you want. So as you can see, it edits all of just the orange. So we're just gonna knock it down a little bit. And again, we're gonna go back to our mass and we're just gonna fine tune it just a little bit. So, I mean, that's pretty much it for how I edit images and bring them to life. The raw image like needs to be good but where the magic happens is in the edit. So you take your before image and it's a good picture, but this is better. And that's just kind of the name of the game. And the beauty of doing this in Lightroom is that we can now take this edit that we've created and this look that we've created and take the edits. We're gonna do choose edit settings to copy. We're gonna make sure we select masks. And we're gonna come over to this image and we're just gonna drop it on there. So then we have the same look that we had and we're just gonna adjust the cropping a little bit. We'll take this one and we'll make, we'll make it a little tighter just for good measure. And we'll, we'll go in and we'll just refine our masks. So this is our back, this is our light source. So we're just gonna slide it over to where the sun is. And this is our vignette and we're just gonna make sure they're over it. We'll, tighten it up a little bit and we're just going to slightly tweak but the hard work is done i mean there you have it. like in 30 seconds i now have two images that look great they have the same look the same color profile and we're off to the races developing your editing look is something that comes over time and i've developed a process to get the look that i get repeatedly if you like this video and you want me to do more photos and show you my process on how I get the look that I do, just let me know and I'll keep them coming. My hair light died. Oh, shit.